So what is the relationship between velocity and angular velocity? Let's pretend we have this spinning disk here. It has an angular velocity of omega. And we are looking for what is the velocity at this point on the outside A. I think from your physics class, you remember the velocity will actually be tangent to this disk, the vector of the velocity. And what is the magnitude there? Well, the magnitude of that vector is equal to omega, which is in radians per second, times r. And r is the distance from the rotating axis to the point of which we're trying to find the uh, velocity. Now, if we want to use a vector formulation here, and this usually applies to 3D scenarios, we can do that. So let's talk about the vector formulation of the relationship between angular velocity and velocity. Pull up an example. So we have the shape, and let's pretend that it is rotating about the center axis here, and it has an angular velocity of omega. And so how would we write omega as a vector? Omega is, if this is the z-axis here, omega is around the z-axis, so we would write this as some quantity, some scalar, times k, all right? It's, this k means around the z-axis, so some angular velocity around the z-axis. So how do we find the velocity, let's say, at this point here? Well, using this method, we would find the perpendicular distance, the shortest distance to the centroidal axis, the rotating axis here. But we can use any vector that starts from the rotating axis to that point if we use this formulation. So I'm just going to use this vector r. So to figure out the velocity at this point A, let's say that's point A, the velocity at A is equal to the vector omega, which we just wrote here, cross the cross product with R. And this is an important formula to know because we'll use it in the future. So this is the vector formulation of how the angular velocity relates to the velocity. And I better put a vector on top of there.